Howdy, folks. K Dog Movies back here again after a long time. I was working, busy working on a puzzle that needed to get done, and uh, for another show I do on this channel. And of course, it's last time we were actually talking about Christmas movies and going after the the Hallmark Channel movies, really hard and heavy. So. Uh, but this time we're going to talk about the other religious holiday uh, that, uh, like today, as uh, I'm currently shooting this, it is Easter Sunday. And of course, um, I try to talk about a biblical film. Uh, so, I think last year, I, I can't remember if it was last year or I talked about the passion of the christ but uh it's been of uh, several films i've talked about over the years so i can't re exactly remember when i when and where i've talked about them and you know i've done so many on this channel uh you know feel free to uh go back and look at um the films i've talked about uh but this time we're going to talk about a film that came out in 1965 and it was kind of one of the last, uh, one of the last forms of the biblical epics. A uh, little bit of history back in the back ever since the dawn of cinema. Uh, Hollywood loved to tell stories from the Bible. Yes, believe it or not, they actually were showing faithful. Christian adaptations, you know, some of the more famous ones uh, and more popular box office films of the time were films like Ben-Hur, The Robe, and The Ten Commandments. Of course, uh, if uh, if you're a faithful fan of the, of the Ten Commandments, you know that ABC tends to show The Ten Commandments on Passover weekend uh weekend of easter around passover because it's kind of a coincidental thing because you no know, do you have the passover for the for for the jews and abc will show the 10 commandments on uh passover but also we celebrate easter which is the death and resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ which also happened at Passover. So so the two do kind of go together. But there's one film that I've been wanting to talk about and I had to go back and look at whether I've, I've talked about it briefly. Uh, like when I talked about The Passion of the Christ, again I talked about it briefly in other videos. Never done a full review. But this time we're going to talk about a different film. This film came out in 1965. Uh, features an all-star cast and uh, was kind of the last of the traditional biblical epics. And this was, I don't want to say it was the film that put the nail in the coffin to on the biblical epics, but it was one of the films that signified to Hollywood, eh, maybe we need to stop making these because one because two things really happened with the biblical epics or biblical stories from the Bible being told as cinema blockbusters. One, the films were getting too expensive and two, they were kind of going into the controversial territory of being either blasphemous or they were starting to step on toes of just people in general and losing money. So, and this is of the persuasion of becoming too expensive and not making profit. And it is, from, again, from 1965, released by United Artists. It is George Stevenson's production of The Greatest Story Ever Told. Okay, now, to be fair, um, 
this film is a a film that cost 20 million dollars back in 1965 if you put it into like today's budgets and things of that nature this would be around a 150 160 million dollar film today uh, now that's fairly small that now that's not a small budget film by any means by today's standards it is a fairly bigger budgeted movie but not as big as what let's say that a Christopher Nolan movie or a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie would be today uh, <laughs> but yeah it cost 20 million dollars which was a record a record for the time and it was honored with five Academy Award nominations did not win any of them uh, now the film features an all-star cast featuring uh, Max von Sydow who was not a star at the time he had been in movies like the seventh seal but that is a Swedish film he is a Swedish actor. He was not very well known here in the United States at the time. However, he is heavily supported with an all-star cast of American and British actors as well other well-known, well-established movie stars of that time. Uh, which there is... If you can read the back of that, that is all the stars that's in this film, uh, which includes uh, Mike's Van Sydow, Michael Anderson Jr., Carol Baker, uh, Inna Balin, Pat Boone, Victor Bruno, v Richard Conti, Joanna Dunham, Jose Ferrer, Van Heflin, Charlton Heston, Martin Landau, Angela Lansbury, Janet Margol, and David McCollum. Roddy McDowell, Dorothy McGuire, Sal Minio, Nehemiah Persoff, Donald Pleasant, Sidney Poitier, Claude Rains, Gary Raymond, Telly Savalas, Paul Stewart, John Wayne, Shelley Winters, Ed Wynn, and members of the, the Inball Dance Theater of Israel. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I am not. Please forgive me. I am a I'm a white American. <laughs> okay. So, um, this film tells the story of Jesus Christ. Uh, it is a birth to crucifix, birth to resurrection story. And um, it tells the story from, the film picks up right at the beginning of his birth. Uh, you see the camera kind of pan in a dark stable and all you see is this little baby hand appear and it is immediately illuminated in a glowing light. Then it cuts to trumpets being blown in the morning to uh, the to the to the wise men. I'm not going to say three because technically in the Bible there was, more than three it just says to the wise men beginning their journey to see king herod to bethlehem where they see the christ child and then goes into the whole uh, baptism the temptation and then the ministry and the whole journey of christ to his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, which we are currently celebrating today. That tomb is empty. Christ is risen. There is good news to tell. And the film is a beautiful, almost, and I'm, I say that, I don't use that term loosely. The film is beautifully photographed, beautifully portrayed. and very well executed 
The only problems that I, I can see with this film is that the film the film has a running time of let's see 199 minutes okay so a little over three hours and 20 minutes approximately three hours and 20 minutes it is it does feel like a three hour and 20 minute long film <laughs> it is very slow in terms of its pacing that's the only criticism I will have against this film uh, at the time it was the reason why this uh, again back to what I was saying before this is why kind of the biblical epics went away one of the reasons is that they were losing money uh, the productions were getting expensive and they were not showing much in returns and this film at the time was lambasted by critics for being such a slow paced boring film I don't think it's boring I just think it's very very slow paced George Stevens in terms of his direction was very slow at telling the story it doesn't move right along very quickly it's it's very slow paced and and if I say so Max von Sydow in this film I his portrayal of Jesus I always felt was the definitely where you feel the the love of Jesus and it's his portrayal is very much he looks at the screen with tears in his eyes like that's the sen the sentimental love especially in the scene where he raises Lazarus from the dead. And the camera is right on his face. And he's asking Mary and Martha, who were the closest to Lazarus, he goes, I, when he says, I am the resurrection and the life, in which he's quoting verbatim right out of the Bible in terms of Max von Sydow giving the performance he's he says I am the resurrection and the life and whosoever believeth in me though he though he were dead yet shall he live and he's and he's saying this with tears in his eyes then he then where it becomes personal is he asks the question to Mary and Mar both them separately he says do you believe this, Mary? And he says, Do you believe this, Martha? And he's saying this with tears in his eyes, which is also, if you read scripture at the time, that's where it has the shortest verse in the Bible where it says, Jesus wept. So he actually is crying. And there, the, in terms of the biblical Jesus, you know, who we know as Jesus in the Bible, he, there's a reason why he was crying, why he wept. Because he knew where Lazarus was. He knew Lazarus was in heaven. He was in paradise. And he had to bring him back to this world where he would have to suffer and die again. He didn't want him to do that. But but he did it because, one, because prophecy, and two, love. He had to do it. And so, this, and like I said, this film is a beautiful, beautifully shot film. 
very epic, but it, it, the, the criticism I have towards it is that it is very, very slow paced. To where I can see why critics would say, uh, this is a boring movie. Uh, it's not, to me, it's not boring. It's just slow paced. It's not quick. You know, scene one, scene two, scene, and just rolling right along to the next thing. I mean, it takes its time in the slow cook everything in terms of where we're going with. And, um, of course, Charlton Heston has, you know, he, he he's, I wouldn't say Charlton Heston is the king of biblical epics because, you know, even though he was Moses in the Ten Commandments, he was Judah Ben-Hur and Ben-Hur, uh, which is not a biblical story. That's based on a novel uh, that takes place around the biblical times. It's a fictitious story. Um, the greatest story ever told is taken from the Bible, but it was inspired by, I believe, a magazine article from back in the 1940s that George Stevens was given and was read that had read and it very inspired him to want to tell a story and now George Stevens was not a particularly re religious guy believe it or not um, but it became a, a, a passion project that he'd always wanted to do and matter of fact uh, it was originally supposed to be released by 20th Century Fox again budgetary issues that the budget was kind of going overboard and out of control that uh, the film ended up going to the hands of United Artists uh, to be released um, again it's a wonderful film it's sh matter of fact it was shot in the format ultra Panavision 70 70 millimeter widescreen film you know which was I guess you would say was kind of the equivalent of what IMAX is today. Um, the last person to actually use Ultra Panavision 70 was Quentin Tarantino for The Hateful Eight. Um, matter of fact, some of the same cameras that shot this movie shot The Hateful Eight. Um, that they, <laughs> but uh, the yeah, the format was um, it's a beautiful format. However, I do take issue with the re the home video releases of this film. Uh, I've never seen this film in the theater. Matter of fact, it, it was 1965 when this was released, so it was a good 19 years before I was even born <laughs> when it came out. Now, home video. Every time I've I've seen this film, it's not been presented in the best elements. The first time I ever saw this film was on VHS. Matter of fact, I do have a VHS copy around here somewhere. I'm uh, not quite sure where it is. Um, but for when MGM put it out onto home video, they put it out in a full frame VHS quality, so you know everything was panned and scanned. Things were cut off uh, because there's some beautiful cinematography in this movie, uh, especially Sermon on the Mount. Oh my gosh, this is a like a camera dolly shot, 70 millimeter, you know, widescreen of the you know Jesus teaching on the mount, and it's just this beautiful shot, and of course. When I first saw it on VHS, it was blown up and just butchered. <laughs> and then we get to... I've also owned the film on DVD. Matter of fact, I snuck my old DVD copy in this Blu-ray uh, and tossed the case. However, it is presented in the um, proper widescreen format. However, it is... 
DVD. And, you know, not the best resolution. Then we come to Blu-ray. This was put out by MGM and uh, 20th Century Fox. Um, I'm not sure if they do any future releases. It may go to Shout Factory or somebody like that in the future. But, um, you know, it's never a good sign when you see before a film plays, this film was brought, this film is presented on Blu-ray with the best elements possible. Disclaimer that appears on screen. That's not good. And the only, the only way that I can assume why that is. Maybe the film didn't have that great of a shelf life in term I'm talking the actual 70 millimeter elements probably were not in the in the best of conditions to being preserved. Um so, will we ever see a definitive uh, home video release of The Greatest Story Ever Told, the way it's supposed to look, and the way it's supposed to sound, and probably not. Um, so, and I can guarantee you, when Am uh Assuming, because Amazon owns the rights to MGM and United Artists libraries, assuming what is presented on Amazon Prime, if you look at that version, they're probably taking from this transfer. And it's hard to say if we will ever see the light of day of a decent transfer of the greatest story ever told. The only possible way to maybe use some AI technology to bring a pristine image, but um, other than that, this is the best that it's ever going to appear, and even this is not the best quality of transfer on Blu-ray. Uh, but it's still a wonderful film. Uh, if you can see it, watch it. Uh, do make yourselves a little comfortable. It is a long film. Again, it is a little slow paced. Uh, but I still enjoy the movie. I think there's still great stuff in it. Um, uh, just the there's some great photography in it there's some great uh, performances and then there's some really hokey uh, but uh, there's there's some that are just in there to be in there uh, <laughs> like for example Angela Lansbury is credited but she plays the part of of um, Claudia, who is Pontius Pilate's wife, and her, she doesn't have a a line of dialogue in the film, and her only scene is that she just peeks around a stair, the corner of a staircase, peeks back, and in turns walks back up the stairs. That's it. A lot of these people are just in the film just to be, to have cameos. John Wayne is credited, and he only says one line. There is a close-up of him as the Roman centurion, and then there's a shot where he's standing on a hill where the where the storm is, where there's rain, and there's a lightning flash, and he, he just goes, truly, this man was the son of God. That's it. Out of John Wayne, you know. 
here here's your million dollar or however I don't think it was a million dollars but here's your eight hundred and fifty dollars and whatever <laughs> you asked for John and you know thank you very much <laughs> so yeah but you do have people that do have bigger parts like tell us Telly Savalas is playing Pontius Pilate uh, Charlton Heston is John the Baptist and so he has a little bit of a lengthier part because not only does he baptize Jesus and he preach in the in the Jordan River, but also he, there's a conflict between him and uh, King Herod, um, Herod Antipas, um, played by Jose Ferrer, and you know obviously he he meets his demise, um, but Jose Ferrer is um, plays the role of Herod Antipas, um, and so his part is a little bit bigger. Martin Landau, I believe, plays Caiaphas. Um, so his so his part obviously is a little bit bigger. Um, Roddy McDowell is Matthew um, Michael Anderson Jr. Uh, is uh, plays. James, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just Sidney Poitier is in the film playing uh, Simon of Cyrene, uh, who is the man that helped Jesus carry the cross uh, to um, to the to Calvary's hill. Uh, Claude Rains is the is the old Herod, King Herod, and just a. There's a ton of people in there you got to look for and see where they're at. And like I said, they don't always have dialogue. They're just a cameo. Shelley Winters is the woman who is uh, who just touches the hem of Christ's garment and says, "I'm cured. I'm cured." That's it. She's done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shelley. Here's your money. Have a good day. <laughs> and that's it. You know, the simple walk on, walk off parts. But they all got credited in in the cast here. So, but yeah, um, it's the greatest story ever told. Um, again, was not very well received upon its release, uh, but had over time kind of gathered a little bit of a, a following um, of people who enjoy the film and praise it for what it was doing and it's it's a it's a very well done movie I will say um, just again slow paced um, but this is how much I enjoy the film you know every every pretty much every film that I really really enjoy I tried to get a soundtrack of some sort well I don't think it's available on CD but I found the soundtrack album yes this is the original soundtrack album from 1965 matter of fact this is in the beginning of the film this painting of Max von Sydow as Jesus and of course that's that's a picture of him on the when he's hanging on the cross there but um, yeah uh, the score was done by Alfred Newman that would be Randy Newman and Thomas Newman and all the other film com modern film composers uh, that would be their father and who was big at uh, who was the head of music at 20th Century Fox originally um yeah so uh George Stevenson's George Stevens I said Stevenson's George Stevens The Greatest Story Ever Told is the film of today. Uh do check it out. I'm pretty sure it is on Amazon Prime being a United Artist release uh in, which is owned by MGM which is owned by Amazon. So uh do check it out on Amazon Prime. Or if you can find a Blu-ray copy, eh, you know, because 
I again, it's never been presented in the best quality. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, just because of the elements that are left, uh, which does happen, like original film stock gets destroyed and it happens. It's of course it's man-made material, so the chemicals break down and stuff like that. But uh, but other than that, the the photography, what is preserved, what you do can make out, is excellent. Um, so do check it out. So from me to you, happy Easter. God bless you. See you later.